the TL. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Yeah. Good morning. I think we can start because uh, we have around 80 participants, 77, 78 participants. So let's begin, and uh, they can uh, participants can join. So I think I would request Mr. Rana to kindly. Uh, begin this today's webinar. Maybe you can introduce the speaker and then maybe can begin today's session. Over to you, Mr. Rana. Oh, very good morning, everyone. A uh, very warm welcome to the National Jal Jal Mission series of webinar. Today we are going to have discussion on the very important topic, that's the AI enabled in groundwater sources exploration targeting monitoring. And with us today we have a prominent speaker, Dr. K D Sarma. Am I audible? Okay, it is requested. Can I take microphone, please. Yeah, I think I would request all the participants to kindly switch off their mic. Please. Otherwise, it will disturb. It will be a disturbance. Yes, please, please go ahead. I think uh, Rana Sahib, you are muted yourself. You are muted. Muted. Can yes. you hear me? Yes, 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 yes. Right. So thank you once again. And you are again muted. Please unmute yourself. Maybe I think some uh, problem with the this one. Yeah, please. Yes, please. Is it okay now? Yes, you are audible now. Yes. Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, sorry for inconvenience. So let me introduce uh, Dr. K. D. Sarma. So Dr. K. D. Sarma is the uh, technical head of Institute Greenfield Eco Solution Private Limited. He has been also a technical member in water management for the National Greenfield Area for Authority Plan Commission Government of India. He is doctorate from IIT. Uh, Bombay. He has also done postgraduate from IT's Netherlands. He was also director of the National Institute of Hydrology Ruti, and his area of expertise is on the groundwater exploration target management. So I will request Dr. K. D. Sarma to kindly enlighten us on the important topic. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you very much. And let me. Here it is. I would just bri uh, not take much time, but briefly tell yes, this groundwater is very, very important. We understand, everyone understands the importance. Number one, number two, we recently had the World Water Day, and the theme was. Groundwater making invisible visible. I think it's so. I think this topic is very, very relevant. And also from Jaljivan Mission, I feel that the very crucial thing is sustainability of our sources. So, in that, from that context, also this groundwater is very, very important. We are looking at how to recharge our aquifers, how to make them sustainable, how to make them uh, uh, sustain to the design period. So as we all know, water is a very critical resource for any country, for any nation, for that matter, for everyone, every individual on this earth. And uh, for that, this groundwater, uh, groundwater resources are again very, very critical and very important. So I am very, very uh, thankful to Dr. K D Sharma for having accepted uh, our request and uh, for delivering this also session. Thank you. Thank you so much. <coughs> Uh, thank you very much, sir. And it was really indeed a nice and a good introduction. Uh, I'm grateful to the National Jal Mission. I'm grateful to the Jal Jeevan Mission, National Jal Jeevan Mission, who has given me this opportunity to interact and to share uh, what we know. Uh, incidentally, uh, 
uh, how Mr. Pradeep Singh, the director of JJM, found me that uh, last month there was a presentation in Niti Ayo. And they gave us, uh, I think, hardly five minutes. So there were some seven slides, and uh, Pradeep Ji was one of the uh, experts there. And then he, he got me, let me tell you, and we got, and then we had all those things. I am a hardcore waterman. I know the water at the back of my hand. I spend the entire life, whole type, all type of thing. And as an on, on an honorary basis, I am working as a technical head with the Greenfield Eco Solutions Private Limited. And uh, we have a very strong team. Uh, we are working into the machine learning and artificial intelligence and those kind of things. So today, I I wish to share with you the groundwater resources in terms of exploration, targeting, and management. Uh, the challenges are a very big sir, challenge. Sorry for interruption, sir. May I request to have a full slide mode, sir? Your presentation. I am I am unmute. Really. No, we can hear you, but if you can make presentation full slide mode. Full slide mode. Okay, slide. The top will be, yeah, start from beginning. Yes. Yes, right. yes sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Uh, so, the fundamental question, where to find the groundwater? As has been told, it is an invisible resource. So the basic thing, where to hit the water, where to target the water, which is lying below the ground, which is not visible. And fortunately, I had experience of working north, south, east, west India and that country, being a civil servant and then the expert in the subject. I really found people struggling for water everywhere whether it is groundwater or surface water. So where to hit the water? Then second thing, how to improve the quality of the water? As you know, perhaps, uh, I, I may sound alarming, but the entire water resources in terms of surface water and groundwater in this country is polluted to some extent whether it is rivers or groundwater, because of continuous use of pesticides and chemicals and industrial effluents and fertilizers, all other things, and then the human other things. So how to improve the quality? Now, uh, where are the solutions? How the people are doing it? Uh, one source is the satellite data, which gives you the landform and formulations and ground truths and other things. Equally important, the geology and three-dimensional mapping of the resources. And then the rainfall and temperature data of a region. Now, traditional solution, I know in my area, I spend, uh, currently I'm living at Jodhpur and I know the Western Rajasthan and other things, that this Water dowsing, there are people who nowadays charging 5,000 rupees. Uh, the farmers are hiring them. Uh, even the departments are hiring them. They walk through the field. They say, uh, this water dowsing, they say, here is the water. And success rate is 28% when we drill. So the no water, 72% chances. As a result, the national uh, this uh, uh, budget is increasing and cost is increasing and other things. What we do, the stakeholders contact us. We use the satellite remote sensing, then three-dimensional mapping. Then uh, there is a ground groundwater mapping, which is known as MOD flow. Many people are in uh, know about it, developed by Indian Institute of Science. Then the land data, landform, climate data, 
and the satellite data here it is and we give this uh, the location where the drilling is taken place and i am happy to share that 90% chances there is a chance uh, friends what is the problem statement the problem statement is exploring and locating a potential good quality groundwater without a scientific approach is a conventional task is a is a challenging task conventional methods are time consuming pseudo scientific uh, they are expensive and ending 72% times in a dried wells so technical brief for what is our technology we provide precision driven satellite based artificial enabled intelligence enabled hydrological analysis for exploration and i am intensely using the word targeting where this prospecting and managing groundwater resources we started this activity 2 years back in 2000 by the in uh, beginning of 2020 2019 uh specifically as you can see we have sold about 3200 units there are 29 fpos and uh, farmers and 13 corporates our usp is 90% accuracy we are assuring in the alluvial region and 75% accuracy in the hard rock region now in addition to that there is a national solar mission electricity boards and, and the phd departments and then the farmers and agriculture ministry other at many of the places they are putting solar pumps so solar pump site suitability analysis is a part of this precision irrigation through groundwater exploration we give precise location for potable source in the drought prone area it is a portable technology and it reduces non this bank loan and financial institutions and other things what is the technology the stakeholder or the client shares geographical coordinates on whatsapp with us we have access to european union satellite uh, outputs we are paying about 16 lakh rupees every 6 months that is the license this is because those outputs have 10 cm resolution whereas the indian satellite have 10 m resolution now once we have the location we we procure the data and then there are layers one or another generated multi data sensor fusion of landform which is coming from the satellite remote sensing rainfall and temperature groundwater yeah. water contours and hydrogeology the dimensional neural network analysis dynamic ground water modeling and weighted overlay analysis these are the different layers which are superimposed through ai on our server and our output is ground water pockets where it is and then their depth and flow direction data as well as map we provide this information to registry survey providers and drilling services for bore well construction now we have we have validated this technology reasonably in the alluvium area and as you can see the left top figure uh, this is one of the region in uh, uh, near khajuraho in chatti in chatarpur district and as the dark blue patches they are showing the ground water pockets then solar pump resistivity then in the same area we are we are giving the flow direction three dimensional map ground water budgeting uh, incidentally we have the drone and radar based ground water investigation facility animal sir the animal tatta control center nu solta adu kore estimate podu solli irukkaru sir ac yaar Yes, sir, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, sir, may I request a mute microphone, please? Okay. So we 
we have this facility also required and we are providing this service to the entire country. Uh, this is an interesting uh, information. Uh, we have in India, there is a groundwater market, 17,200 crore rupees. We started our operation from Bangalore. Uh, two years back, and now we are working in the specifically in South and Western India. Uh, we have total something like 25 corporate customers. They have the corporate social responsibility under which they are providing water to the uh, people drinking water specifically. And uh, then we go for the how we acquired the customer through network marketing, exhibitions, mobile marketing. An interest and a very interesting point which has emerged that in India, the groundwater sector works on practical demonstration of capabilities for products and services. One has to prove it, demonstrate it. Then this service works. Uh, we have conducted a conducted a stakeholders uh, interview about 540 people were interviewed across these uh, five six states now you you all know what is the major problem of stakeholder in india that water is a fundamental required resource about 70 percent our needs are being met by the groundwater so groundwater prospecting donation is very essential for these stakeholders now, can every stakeholder in India afford more wealth? This is the second question which we pose to the people. Normally, stakeholders having five acres of land, they can afford the more wealth. This is the minimum land holding. Specifically for the departments and PhD and for in the in the in the Barmer district, we have given um, 50 sites out of which 48 were success PhD drilled. And uh, for them, it is the location, where is the need? They drill, where is the need? For that, they have to find the water, assure that there is a ground water. Now, will it be enough to provide only satellite data to stakeholders? No, sir. Stakeholders need a complete solution from groundwater mapping, drilling, pumping, distribution, water quality, announcement to finance. Uh, we have our competitors, and as you can see through this, that uh, we are ahead of, men, of uh, many of them. Uh, we provide 90% accuracy in alluvial and 75% in hard rock area. Our technology is affordable. We have a full entire transparent method, and we give results within a day compared to uh, whatever you see for the other competitors. And uh, they have something like seven days and uh, you hit and trial drilling and 5% and so on. Uh, what are our revenue model, how we earn, how we do the things. Sir, we provide two kinds of services. One is groundwater detection and another is prediction. And for this, we, we offer multi-sensor fusion derived groundwater prediction detection, estimation, and forecasting on software as a solution pay per acre model, not per point, per acre, because the satellite have a synoptic view. Another thing we do, we, we have gone into like the weather prediction, we have gone into the groundwater prediction also how it would behave when you start pumping, how the water groundwater table would lower down and forecasting and prediction services are also offered to the specifically corporate people are more interested. And I, I am sure that department would be more interested. So client pay on per acre basis of number of times water network area analyzed, starting at rupees 3,300 per acre or per point for groundwater detection to about rupees 8,500 per acre. For groundwater prediction and forecasting. For individual, for farmer, or for uh, we charge 3,300 rupees. For NGO, FPO, we charge 4,300 rupees. And for 
departments and corporate we thousand we charge five thousand here yes. and 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 there is an moq minimum order quantity of at least 10 location uh, our go to market strategy that we have three acquisition state market for the, we have three acquisition strategy one is hire an insider and this company has hired me uh, i am an insider i um, in the from the water resource ministry agriculture ministry and all those department so hire a senior executive from the groundwater department who is retiring or to represent us in that particular state we do share white papers and case studies which could be used for our customers internally as well as to our customers and we attend meetings conferences seminars trade fairs and provide the information and do for the digital marketing we have a website and uh, very soon it will be an interactive website where a, a stakeholder can go log in place the order get the information now hard rock is a tricky area and as you know two third of the country is occupied by the hard rock right it start from the madhya pradesh maharashtra karnataka gujarat uh, part of gujarat tamil nadu andhra telangana and there actually water remains in cracks crevices and fissures unlike uh, in the alluvium area so we are focusing more on this direction uh, from last 2001 2022 uh, to last year one year so this this trial has been done in the gujarat near dolavira and then we have done it uh, in pune district in maharashtra and uh, at the icr campus uh, in the the sugarcane campus at coimbatore as you can see the, there we require a ground penetrating radar in addition to the satellite data and then we have the information and data so far we have achieved 75% accuracy and we are constantly and continuously trying to improve it can we have some certification some facilities some felicitations and other things uh, our team i am the head technical then we have dr rajat dinesh who is the head operation fortunately the greenfield eco solution company is headed by uh, promoter and founded by women there are two women directors and we have our advisor dr mohan kumar from indian institute of science the famous ground water man who happens to be our friend and other thing and uh, i think myself and professor mohan kumar we are working together from 1993 in one or the other capacity thank you very much we have our website and my phone number and our details are available with the mission i have my colleague uh, mr riddhis soni also who has joined this group and both of us would take uh, your questions and we'll try to uh, answer all, all but if not all but the many of them thank you very much Right, so uh, thank you very much, sir, for insightful presentation. Uh, basically, in fact, uh, you mentioned that you are working from Jodhpur, and the last week I was also in Rajasthan. This time, the Jodhpur team has been in four districts in Rajasthan, including Jodhpur. So, Jaisalmer, Jodhpur, Tosa, Ajmer. So, one week program we had, sir. And one of the key issues what we faced in Rajasthan that was on source sustainability issue. And as you are aware, everyone that uh, Rajasthan, especially Western part of Rajasthan, Pune, Jaisalmer, uh, Jodhpur, we get very less rain for intensity, of 150 mm most things. And that's the reason that some schemes are based on that uh, on the Indira Gandhi Canal, somewhere from the Salpur Dam. And groundwater is very critical in that area. So we had a meeting with the groundwater center, not but the board also last time. And what we were told that the water, groundwater situation in Rajasthan is very critical. And the scheme should not be dependent on the groundwater sources where the water source is critical. So since you are based in Rajasthan, so what is your opinion about that, sir? Do you think that groundwater situation in Rajasthan is sustainable for long term? Because we designed the infrastructure for minimum 30 years. So first thing that what's your opinion? It would be helpful for other team members to understand. 
सो थैंक यू वेरी मच राणा साहब वो मैं राजस्थान कैडर का ही आदमी जी हाँ तो मेरी पहली पोस्टिंग बाड़मेर में ही हुई थी जैसलमेर जालोर पाली जोधपुर नागौर आई नो दिस दिस डिस्ट्रिक्ट्स वेरी इंटीमेटली व्हेन वी सी दी सेंट्रल ग्राउंड वाटर बोर्ड डेटा एक्सेप्ट हनुमानगढ़ एंड गंगानगर ऑल द डिस्ट्रिक्ट्स हैव द नेगेटिव ड्रा डाउन अब तो से 140 परसेंट हंड्रेड फिफ्टी परसेंट एंड इवन हंड्रेड टेन परसेंट एंड दोज काइंड ऑफ थिंग्स हाउ एवर देर आर पॉकेट्स देर आर प्लेसेज स्पेसिफिकली वेर एवर देर इज लाइम स्टोन फार्मेशन दोज एक्यूफर्स आर वेरी रिच देन वी हैव ए फेमस लाठी एक्यूफर विच इज देंड स्टोन फार्मेशन running through jaisalmer part of barmer and other area which is almost unexplored source of water a ground water situation is critical specifically in barmer district in jalor area some part of the area northern jalor that is a critical but southern galore is okay jodhpur is also again uh, the aquifer is mainly of sandstone Uh, however for drinking water uh, the in fact all those districts have been uh, classified under the dark zone but for drinking water uh, there is a relief so for drinking water source uh, under that csr program this k in india the vedanta group they approached us and they we gave them 50 locations in barmer district and they found water at 48 places so uh, generalizing the entire the western part or the state uh, is not desirable however there are uh, pockets wherever there is limestone formation or there is a sandstone formation fortunately the wind uh, uh, this is a sand aquifer sandy aquifer wind blown sandy aquifer also have some water along the runi river and other areas but that is saline right so uh, so this is the in nutshell uh, that is the situation in rajasthan but for drinking water if you stuck a well if you get some good water specifically uh, uh, it should last uh, 10 to 15 years and to say that we recharge water and from where to bring the water for recharging however uh, about uh, uh, two years in a out of five years happens to be a normal and good rainfall year so we get some water for recharging so lot of structures have been made other thing so you have to go and drill for and get the water to the people right sir no thank you for giving the detailed information about and whenever you come next time sure sir no i could have contacted i was not aware to be honest sir otherwise definitely i could have contacted in jodhpur so i will you, uh, i will get in touch with you sir uh, yeah. we will share a report okay. which has been uh, when i was in the water resource ministry this study was done and then uh, status of ground water in rajasthan so i will be very happy to share it so now in the presentation you mentioned about two component one you mentioned about the ground water source detection and second part you mentioned about the prediction so my question is sir like we are, when we are designing an infrastructure based on the ground water scheme and we expect that the ground water source should be sustainable for the design period so in your experience like is there any proven technology which can predict at a specific location my ground water source is going to sustainable for next 20 years or 30 years or 15 years yeah. right. any way to find out sir oh, yes yes sir uh, uh, you must have seen rana saab that about 10 years ago the weather weather for weather people were the most abused people but now when they predict that there would be a rainfall there would be a heat there would be a wind there would be clear thing they are uh, correct up to the 90% 98% so there is a different branch of uh, mathematics which is known as 
prediction strategy and that groundwater prediction specifically prediction and forecasting depending upon the groundwater trend in the surrounding area how they are falling or rising we can very well predict you that this source would last for x y z so many years at the present rate of exploitation so now those advanced model and ai and machine learning so those whether people what they use we have brought that technology here and we are using it. corporate people are very interested in that so i i wish that now the state people go for this prediction and forecasting great so in your whatever study you have done so far based on your experience in the study done uh, how many years you have predicted maximum if you talk about the indian uh, scenario um, can you say that okay now maximum places you have predicted 15 years or 20 years what kind of reports so far we have got uh, incidentally sir whatever the water resource we have mm. if you see the water balance which uh, central water commission has given and the central groundwater board predicts uh, bring out the report every five years and uh, our current population is about 133 crore and it seems that we are going to stabilize by 150 crore by 2050 okay so whatever the water available as on today uh, specifically the surface water and uh, there are uh, there are very very good groundwater pockets also they would uh, help us to go sustainably up to 2050 so let's hope for the best right thank you sir sir we are getting a lot of questions from the uh, participants also so i will go through that uh, each questions and it will be grateful that you could just try to answer those questions so question is coming from mr hari singurani he wants to know we would like to know how to cite fugal location animators so how to, how to, to know how to find out the tubal location so what okay. the identifier yeah. the exact location of the tubal that is that is what we are doing sir the entire presentation on that only we point out we through this is through this technique we give you here the water target the water there i am we are targeting rather we are isolating the pockets that is the targeting and uh, we give the where is the water about approximate depth and uh, flow direction and uh, i wish personally uh, being a uh, being a person from this background at least have 10 percent uh, verification through drill through the resistivity sir okay right. to be on sure but for 90 uh, points uh, out of uh, for 90 percent there is no need to go for it but then uh, there is always plus minus uh, some chances so we will give the exact location where is where you have to drill at what do you will find um through this technology it is really difficult to predict the quality but uh, somehow the bigger broader estimate of quality could also be given so please go for 10 percent suppose we give 100 point for 10 percent of the point go for resistivity depth uh, this resistivity survey to become the assurance Oh, thoda sa hume bhi hamara sarkar mein reh ke we save our skin also, samjhe. Ji. Thank you, sir. Our uh, next question is related to the security and sustainability. The question is uh, how to ensure security and sustainability of groundwater sources in a scientific approach. Hmm. Uh, let me be the frank enough and let me be the truthful. Now I can say the truth because I am super innovated. Almost all water and for that matter, almost all groundwater uh, in the southern and in the western region has been exploited. The surplus region of groundwater lies in Odisha, West Bengal and Northeast India. So what we were advocating and what I am advocating, sir, 
in the southern India and in the western India uh, go for groundwater uh, demand management rather than uh, managing groundwater demand management and uh, uh, wherever there is a shortage of water but in the uh, but in the other areas still for example uh, Assam has only 13% utilization, Odisha has 20% utilization, West Bengal has something like 28% utilization. So they are surplus region. But in the other area, please go for demand management, not for the uh, keep on exploiting and other thing. You know the background of the Punjab and Haryana and for that matter, Gujarat, Maharashtra. Nice. And, uh, and sir, we would help in that in that direction. Great. Uh, similar question. So they are very specific to the particular districts. So I think what is the source sustainability measure in the Dang, Shetra, uh, Midrail block and the Karoli district? I'm not sure whether it is part of Rajasthan or other districts. So Karoli district and how we can do the source sustainability measure. That was the question. I think already you have answered the source sustainability part. सर हमें उसकी लोकेशन एंड कोऑर्डिनेट प्रोवाइड कर दीजिए जी लोग व्हाट वी विल डू वी विल वी विल वी विल वर्क फॉर इट एंड वी विल शेयर द रिजल्ट्स राइट सो अदर क्वेश्चन इज जी या या प्लीज गो अहेड या सर वन क्वेश्चन इज फ्रॉम मिस्टर धीरेंद्र कुमार आह हिस क्वेश्चन इज आज सर प्लीज इनलाइट अस अबाउट द ग्राउंड वाटर मेजरमेंट रिलायबल मेथड ऑन व्हिच बेसिस लॉन्ग टर्म सस्टेनेबल Water supply scheme can be designed. Should we rely on the remote sensing method? Uh, my colleague, uh, Mr. Sony, there. Uh, Ridish, would you like to answer this question? Yes, yes, I can. Uh, Shortly, go. Thank you, Dr. Sharma. Uh, so, when we talk about long-term sustainability and policy and planning. You, the most important factor that you must consider over here is the stakeholder interaction. So if you consider a typical scenario where government is at the policy planning level, the farmers are at the, like, you know, uh, the, there are farmer users, there are farmers, uh, there are water users, water sellers and control groups. So the harmony between all these three stakeholders is very essential to determine the, you know, how the policy is. You make a policy, but in order to enforce that policy and also it, sh it has to be done from the farmer's uh, will itself. You have to understand what is the socio-economical considerations over there. So currently all the farmers, maybe they might be thinking whether I am getting water today, that is their main concern. But when you talk about sustainability, you have to think about, you know, the future generations as well, whether I would be having water left for my children or not. Currently, uh, those kind of mindsets, we have found certain lot of areas in the Tamil Nadu, in places of the Tamil Nadu, where they are regenerating the, uh, the buried cracks and fissures and refilling the surplus water runoff into those cracks and storing those uh, water for future generations. So those kind of uh, activities have been done, but certain areas where exploitation is, uh, you know, greater than the policy enforcement. We need to uh, harmonize those channels in order to establish a stronger communication between the different stakeholders. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, other question is related to hilly region. Uh, question is that uh, uh, generally geohydrology based spring set management technique is being used in the hilly region. So what is your experience about this and which method will be more useful, whether it is geohydrology or artificial intelligence, remote sensing methodology, especially in the hilly region. Uh, Rana ji, in the hilly region, uh, from the geology or the hydrogeology point of view, uh, we have the donor regions, and then we have the receptor regions. Donor are those regions like the steep slopes of the hills where the runoff simply flows down. It doesn't uh, very little penetrate or because of the rock and other thing, penetration is very little left. And then the narrow valleys or the foothills, like in the Arauli and then the, in the specifically happen to be in the Shillong area also for I spent something like four years there. 
so narrow valleys and then the foothills and then specifically the something like a little bit uh, plateau area or plain area which are found in the hilly region they are the receptor regions so in donors there is no groundwater please don't go please go please don't please don't drill a well on the top of a hill because there is no water they are the donor regions but in the receptor regions which i narrated just now uh, good quality potential ground water is available and available in plenty right thank you sir uh, next question from mr g pondrala lao uh, he is asking about the quality so how do you predict the quality of ground water vidish <laughs> now yes your so, floor one part is the detection of the groundwater quality and second is the remediation process where you improvise the groundwater quality so as far as the uh, you know detection of the groundwater quality is present the groundwater is having many contaminants even nowadays people are also talking about microplastics being injected into the certain aquifers or maybe there is like you know sometimes Uh, majorly in parts of certain parts of india chromite contamination has been observed so for groundwater quality we have uh, certain uh, techniques but it requires uh, ground truthing as well so uh, collection of ground data and then integrating into the uh, satellite data but here the pa part is about the when it comes about the remediation we are having a technology that converts the micronizes the uh, constituents uh, of uh, the dissolved constituents in water whereas we are re reducing the tds Uh, so that the water penetration capacity is increased by decreasing the tds so hard water hardness is a very big problem when you consider places of you know any part of ganga it is having high amount of calcium carbonate so we have a technology that is able to give you more uh, better water penetration capacity as far as the ground water is uh, sorry hard water is concerned specifically we can also work in the saline area as, as well so in parts of kutch we there were uh, like you know only chikus and uh, coconuts were there for present on the coastal areas we were able to you know uh, divert them into producing uh, vegetables as well so uh, sea water is having something a tds around 11000 as well but we were able to convert it using our device and we were able to uh, uh, use it utilize it for irrigation application yes. right right sir so next question is that, sir how to quantify water availability in the tubing so yes one is the availability yes what is available but question is that quantity how much quantity will be available for how long so i think the request to know the methods um uh, we through the technology which uh, we are working sir uh, we can give the depth of water then uh, the its exact location targeting and the flow direction but in case of the quantity the volume it is the aquifer volume it is the extent of the aquifer and almost all major aquifers in the country are mapped by central ground water board the maps are available however the local aquifers specifically known as the purged water tables and then uh, aquifers which are very small in the aerial extent Uh, unless we drill the well, go for the well development. Uh, that is a standard technique that you run continuously till you get the bottom, and that's the way the cavities are developed. Then there are equations and formulas where, in the confined and in the unconfined aquifers, the groundwater quantity could be estimated reasonably well. however uh, there, is, there is in addition to the what this told the last question so looking from the surface we can only have the guess work of the water ground water quality but uh, no technique give you the exact location we can only know the uh, fresh hai saline hai highly saline hai these kind of things right right So again, question is from Northeast from Mizoram. Ah, uh, from Mr. Mavia. Ah, uh, this question is: Please suggest methods for groundwater development, exploration, and management for hilly states like Mizoram. 
um, I happen to be Igel through road through road from and I have traveled a few districts. As I told sir, there are donors and then there are receptors in Mizoram. In Mizoram, the slopes are very, very steep and the hills are very, very pointed out. So groundwater is available only in uh, the narrow valleys or in the specifically foothills and other things. And in the idol itself, they were bringing water from a few kilometers downstream from the river because they are in major of the hills are very steep. So in the receptor areas, uh, we can find out where are, which are the receptor area through satellite remote sensing and work for it where to go and report the water. Right, sir. Uh, question from Mr. Ajay. Uh, he's asking which method is most effective for recharging underground water? Borewell recharge, plantation, ponds, and depending on the others. If we take broader scenario of the country, where the where the Ajay is located, sir? Uh, uh, Mr. Ajay, could you please mention or yes. details about the location? So. So I'm talking about Bihar and UP. Okay, Bihar, so Bihar, Bihar, Bihar. very nice. Bihar. Uh, specifically, uh, if we take country as a whole, and we we talk about groundwater recharge, so deficit areas are in the west, and surplus areas are in the east. Right. And bringing the water from surplus area to the deficit area for recharging, we have to go through that chicken neck. Right. So this proposal, uh, when I was in the planning commission, we gave to the uh, cabinet secretary, and on the basis of that, uh, some money was given to the eastern India. So in the chicken neck, we have a railway line, then we have a highway, and then the area is very narrow. But look, but on a broader scale, it doesn't seem feasible, let me tell you. However, in the UP and Bihar, in other area, if you go towards the further east, there is a problem of arsenic, which is coming in the groundwater, in the Bihar and right. further West Bengal, other thing. Not in the UP, especially only in one district, only in UP. So please go for the borewell recharge. Because plantation, uh, plant plants itself take water and operates, and in, the, in such areas, the plants operate about eighty percent of the water. Huh. So go for the borewell recharge, and uh, the other technique like uh, making any curves and percolation dams. Other in UP Bihar, land is very expensive; every every inch is cultivated. So. <laughs> Broader scale pe feasible nahi hai. Sir, sir, mira ek last question hai, sir, in, yeah, in context of Sikkim, where the water sources are on the private land. So what are the solutions if the sources are on the private land, especially in context of Sikkim and Northeast? Um, sir, mujhe uh, happen to go to Gangtok and a little bit in the surrounding area. Private water sources are in the private land. So you buy it. And uh, have you heard about the water markets? Yes. In Odisha, there are water markets. So in the hilly area, these water markets are also now coming up. Thank you, sir. Uh, uh, question from Mr. Faraj Ahmed. I think he would like to ask a question. So can I request the team to unmute him and Go ahead, sir. Mr. Faraj Ahmed. Uh, hi. Good, good morning, everyone. Am I audible? Yes, we can hear you, sir. Uh, so, good morning, sir. My name is Faraz Ahmed, and I am Deputy Program Manager from Center for Science and Environment. Uh, sir, thank you very much for very insightful uh, uh, presentation that you have given, and uh, we all are working towards like uh, artificial intelligence and making use of remote sensing and GIS. 
in ground water location and exploration so however sir i have uh, two questions in that so sir my first question is that sir uh, like you said sir you have 70% of success rate in hard rock terrains so sir uh, me uh, i am also a hydrogeologist and i saw no sir sir hard rock is very tricky because of heterogeneity of aquifer and sir where we depend on fractures or lineaments for you know exploration of ground water so sir in this artificial intelligence and remote sensing we can certainly identify the lineaments sir but uh, this technology that you are using it sir how are, how are we taking to consideration the depth of the lineament like if i have to plan for uh, drilling of wells or even for recharge structure so how do i ensure the depth of the lineament i know certainly the pockets of lineaments but depth of lineaments uh, that is important and sir my second question is that sir uh, when we are uh, preparing uh, for even doing modeling for prospecting of ground water or future prediction of ground water so there we need sir, certain hydrological parameters aquifer characteristics such as transmissivity hydraulic conductivity so sir how are we uh, taking those into consideration uh, are we doing some on field test such as aquifer performance test or uh, step drawdown test or any other method that we are using so it is sir, less time consuming and less cost uh, consuming sir thank uh, you yes please yeah uh, in the hard rock area we know the you told that we know the extent of the fracture but we wanted to know the about depth and other things so through the radar technology we know that and radar specifically this uh, is expert in that area so we, we can look up to 100 100 meter this yes sir in dry yes yes so we have the this this technique we brought from the spain and balamis is the company b a l a m i s roser happens to be a, a friend of mine so through those radar we can see the Some technical issue, just bear with us. Uh, in 
the meantime, if someone has any question, a specific question, kindly put in the chat uh, chat box. And understand some of you also would like to ask question uh, personally. So once he comes back, please request you to unmute and ask the question. You can raise the hand, and we will allow you to interact directly. Yes, sir. Can you hear us, sir? I think some technical issue. Oh, he, uh, he is now visible. The screen. Maybe he has to. Uh, difficult, I think. Mm -hmm. uh Dr. Sarma, are you able to hear us, sir? For rejoin, sir. Yeah, uh, Dr. Sharma, you can switch off your video. I think there is an issue of bandwidth. You can please switch off your video, then speak. We will talk. In the meantime, the is trying to come back from the connectivity. So uh, I think uh, the topic what has been discussed so far is quite uh, important. And uh, most of the states are implementing the scheme on groundwater sources. So as we have deliberated today, it's very important that we do the scientific study to identify the location of the bore well. And we should have the appropriate measure for groundwater recharge sources to make it sustainable, those things. Uh, I have been visiting different states, different places, and we have heard some places that even tubewell has been drilled in a couple of years back, it has dried up. And the reason for that incident is that we are not have the proper study. So it's worth to invest some time and money to do the proper study before selection of the right so sources, groundwater sources. Unless we have created the infrastructure, and unless until we have the secured source of water, our infrastructure is not going to work. And we need we have to make the functional, so the study of functionality is the most important aspects. Uh, Rana, sir, good morning. Uh, good morning, sir. sir. Uh, yeah. yeah. Sir, uh, how you can take uh, services of Mr. K.D. Sarma? Uh, in Chhattisgarh, because we have Sir, dry patches yes. and hilly terrain. So we can definitely share his contact number and the email ID also, sir, those things. Please. So I will request, yes, and definitely uh, you can directly contact him for take the in services. In some hilly terrain, we are facing the uh, uh, yield in the sources. So we yeah. are not able to prepare uh, DPR for those areas. Uh, yeah. Like we have covered the Kabirdham, Pandaria, and uh, some Ambikapur uh, hilly terrain. Ambikapur Great. area hilly terrain. So we want to have a uh, since he has a vast experience in geology, hydrogeology, and location of sources, which hmm. are the very essential part of our JJN. Correct. So please. So share Mr. Yes, so Mr. Please share. Yes, Mr. Is there. Uh, Mr. This is also from Greenfield. 
Uh, you would like to respond, Mr. Riddhis? Yes, sir. So actually, we are having uh, our uh, collaborator in uh, Chhattisgarh is the IGKV, Indira Gandhi uh, Krishi Vikyan University. So okay. uh, we are already doing our projects in Chhattisgarh. Uh, so uh, we have a strategic MOU with them as well. So I think uh, we can uh, reach out to you uh, for the. Sir, uh, if you uh, come to Raipur uh, to help uh, uh, your associate partner, Indira Gandhi Krishi Vikyan, uh, sir, I would like to contact you. In that period, what sure, sir. time you permit? Sure, sir. Uh, sir. Mr. Riddhis, uh, for benefit of the participants audience, will it be possible in chat box share your contact details, email, so that if anyone has any further uh, question they would like to interact with you, they can approach you? No, uh, yes, uh, Mr. Rana, we are sharing his contact number. Share kar rahe. His contact See, number thank, you, sir. thank you, sir. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, please. Oh, come Yes, we are sharing it. I think, uh, I think he's finding it difficult to join again. Uh, some because we had a lot of interesting. I think he has already. Uh, Mr. Ritish has already uh, shared the email ID. It's admin at the rate greenfield eco dot com. So we are also again sharing it. You can. Uh, his mobile number we are sharing. You can get in touch with him, Mr. Uh, KD, Dr. K.D. Sharma. Uh, I think maybe we'll check up with him whether he'll be able to join. Some connectivity issues. Ek bar check kar lo. Mobile number ek bar check kar lo. Galat number 2468. Uh, mobile number also has been shared now from National Jail Generation ID. To uh, Dr. Sharma, the 9799980000. 97? 979999 uh, 9 Yes. 8 Okay. So, I think he has joined again. Maybe he can. Uh, uh, Dr. Sharma, can you hear us? Unmute kar liya, unmute kar liya. Please unmute yourself. I think you are muted. Dr. Sarma, can you hear us? He's muted. He's muted. Can you unmute kar liya? Yes, unmute kar liya. Okay, I'm here again. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry, sorry. 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 Sorry, Yes, I think uh, we have muted right. the devices. Right. So thanks for coming back. And uh, again, I think a lot of questions is coming from the participants. Uh, this question again from the Northeast Sikkim region and Mr. Sanjeev Rai, Chief Engineer. Uh, he wants to understand in the context of Sikkim, we have many dried up water bodies. Can these dried up water bodies high up in the hills act? as receptor areas for groundwater. Can we tap these areas to extract water and provide it for drinking purposes? Uh, uh, sir, still we are getting eco sound, sir. If you kindly switch off one microphone, or maybe double a device working. Yes, sir. So the context was in Sikkim, right, sir? 
Yeah, Sikkim. Yes, sir. So in uh, Sikkim, uh, the pockets where uh, the groundwater the groundwater tables are present, uh, we are able to get the location. But in uh, as uh, one of the questions was asked that you know how do we share the resources between uh, if a, if a land is you know privately owned, we have a mechanism by which we are able to provide hydro social contracts. So we are not at an enforcement level, but we 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 act like as a framework as to uh, how water sharing is done. So we have done successful water sharing uh, hydrological contracts with uh, various stakeholders in the Rajasthan, where one farmer is having water and one farmer is not having water, as we detect from the uh, our uh, analysis. So we help to share, share kind of make a MOU between the two farmers to tell them that see this is uh, how you can actually. Uh, you know, ensure yeah. equitable distribution of water is to different uh, stakeholders as well. Right. Thank you, sir. Uh, request from Mr. Prabhat that I think you would like to ask a question. So kindly unmute yourself, sir. You yes, can sir, ask. Good uh, yes, Please sir. Go good ahead, afternoon. Sir. Yeah, good afternoon, sir. My name is Prabhat and I am working as a uh, project manager technical in district project management unit of Jal Jeevan Mission. So I am from Kota, Rajasthan. And I want to ask, sir, that there are uh, there are many places in our quota region where we are not taking we are taking tube wells as the main sources for the JJM. But these tube wells are not the primary. We cannot take primary sources at they are they are very limited in they are in very limited for ten years five years. So what should we do if we are not able to find any? Uh, perennial sources for for the long term in the JGM. This is one question, and another question is, what do you think about the drawbacks of this technology, that is AI uh, integrated groundwater technology that you discussed? What do you think about there? There are some drawbacks, or not? These are the two questions I want to. Thank you, sir. Uh, I will. I will. Okay. I will, I will, I will take up the first question. Oh, with this, you kindly help them. Yes, sir. So, uh, when you talk about the groundwater resources, there are two types of uh, aquifer zones. One is the shallow groundwater uh, area, which is continuously replenished by the rainfall. Every rainfall comes, it gets replenished and it gets recharged every year. And there is another one, which is called as a deeper aquifer zone which uh, it takes you know millions of years for water to get accumulated in those places and uh, like you know this uh, water, groundwater the deeper groundwater tables are not uh, having the component of getting replenished by any means as possible unless it is a kind of a paleo channel so uh, the kind of uh, our targets is to first focus on the uh, because sustainability is something that we have uh, and we follow by all means possible so the kind of uh, the region where the shallow water re region is there, which gets replenished, is something that we try to uh, get uh, the the, 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 water, the farmers should be getting those regions tapped first, rather than getting the deeper aquifer zones. As far as certain pockets where the groundwater depth is greater than 800 feet or you know more than 1,000 feet, we have certain radar-based equipments that are employed, and that can uh, basically these equipments are uh, primarily used for oil exploration. So in uh, parts of Balmer, we had uh, deployed where the aquifer zones were like minimum depth was around 1300 feet. So we, uh, they, uh, you know, prospecting those kind of, uh, uh, you know, resources are the ones which you, if you are talking only about the prospecting and uh, uh, targeting those resources. But if you want to make a kind of a recharge, you have to identify cracks and fissures that are, you know, like, you know, lying dry. And you have to try to develop a mechanism by which you can inject uh, water into these cracks so that uh, water can be like you know replenished and be used for the for the applications as well so we have done certain kind of projects in uh, salem district for the uh, this kind of project where we have uh, injected uh, uh, the water uh, in these cracks and uh, like you know converted the dry cracks and fissures into uh, you know water based uh, resources as well that's right Hello. 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 Sir, you can disconnect and we can re rejoin, sir, because it's still, I think, true system is open. So, better to switch up. No, he is and logged in in three devices, three names he is logged in. Maybe he has to uh, log out. 
Yeah, maybe you have. You can. We can wait for a few minutes. You can log out and again, then again, uh, log in. So can that's you, the way out. Can you? Can you? Remove him, otherwise. Hear me now. Remove him. Go remove. 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 Uh, how does how can we use this technology to uh, for aquifer recharge? So can we have some plan strategy using these technologies? You have you know satellite data, radar data, so you have lot of things. So how can we plan for aquifer recharge using these technologies? Do we have any studies how best these technologies can be leveraged for planning our aquifer recharge? Uh, you know, long term, it's like for uh, which is also very, very crucial. So, so I can uh, show one of the uh, dashboards that we have and uh, one, uh, one of the current projects that we are developing to uh, impact around 11 lakh farmers of Banda district in Uttar Pradesh. I can, uh, yeah, I can share the screen. Sir, is it visible? Yeah, it's yes, yes, it's visible. Yes, see that. Yes, sir. So this is the typical kind of a Google map, right? You use for ordering pizzas, burgers, or booking cabs, like you know, or navigation purposes. And uh, this is the European Space Agency radar uh, that is uh, operate operational at uh, you can say a uh, very reasonable uh, price, uh, but it is having a five centimeter penetration depth. This is our radar by the combination of uh, the the uh, the higher frequency. Uh, the, so this is the L-band frequency. This is giving you five centimeter penetration, and this is giving you around sixty meter penetration depth. So anything between five centimeter and uh, sixty uh, meters, we are able to detect it. So this is one of the paleo channels that you can see over here, which cannot be seen in, in either of the Google image or the C-band radar image. And we are able to by using a, a technique between by using the multi-frequency radar technique, we are able to uh, discriminate. Uh, uh, Detect the underground water resources between lying between five centimeter to sixty meters. So this is one of the projects that we are doing in the Banda district. So now, uh, once this uh, entire project is being done, what we do is uh, generally we try to uh, integrate it with the land-based records. And now this is a kind of a giving a microscope, macroscopic picture. And now we will be detailing into the farm. Uh, individual farmland to whether to tell the farmer that you are having water or not having water. So the people who are not having water, the, the uh, for example, there has been one kind of a success story in Aurangabad. So Aurangabad people used to exploit the, because in India, it is no, groundwater is not more of a technical problem as much as it, as it is a socio economical problem. So uh, when a farmer is having uh, uh, his so many children, there is physical division of land that is being taken in place. So what they want the now because of the creation of the farmer producer organizations, the farmer there will be no physical division of the land. Farmer will be the stakeholder of this organization. Like you know, you are a stakeholder of a company. Then and instead of having physical division of land, there would be like you know a, a, a strategic stay, a stakeholder given and they will be given wages uh, as well as a share in the total uh, profits as uh, profits as well. So. Uh, there was an Australian company which had integrated I put 1 crore rupees from their part where the farmer had to put 10 lakh rupees from their part. So they came up together, they said that we will utilize our modernized instruments and we will kind of create a kind of environment where large scale farming is being done rather than you know localized uh, uh, farming in the land. So in such kind of a situation where FPO creation is being done, the water can be like you know used sustainably because where you have plenty of water, you will try, you know, try to change the crop. Uh, where you don't have water, you will, you know, make strategies that can be utilized for uh, crop diversification. So this is one of the techniques that can be followed. Another one uh, where where we talk about the drought areas, uh, you can like you know divert the using the water harvesting. Uh, so many systems are being uh, you know in place. You can divert those extra surplus water during the rainfall in the underground water resources. So there are certain kind of you know uh, water marches that were connected. Because, so you, you have to include the, these farmers 
and all the stakeholders uh, and have to uh, show them that you know they are an active part of this entire uh, program as well so that is one of the projects that we had done in salem district and it was a, a success story it is already already published as well so i think uh, certain kind of strategies with uh, private government interactions we are able to and all, all, all already the farmers uh, the industries as well these uh, kind of industries can be done secondly if you talk about industries uh, the groundwater in industrial area is a very regulated sector any company which is drawing 10000 liters per day surplus they have to get uh, uh, the water meters installed uh, compulsorily and uh, the, they have to pay a revenue for the uh, extra uh, amount of 1000 liters that they use per day consumption so uh, similarly, if uh, such kind of policies can be implemented for the agriculture sector also, it can make a significant uh, this thing, but it is a long term project because, you know, to bring a sudden change is a very big uh, uh, issue in the current Indian ecosystem. So it has the change from non revenue to revenue water has to be taken in order to have the accountability factor. Once that accountability factor comes, then the people can be like, you know, uh, reduced to uh, like they can be conscious about the usage of water. That is what happens in Europe that whenever you go to any uh, place where, you know, there is plenty of water, still you have to pay for that water. So you know the value of that resource as well. Yes. Uh, it is one question. Uh, during the field visit, uh, one of the things we have observed some places regarding the location of the tube well. So, what is happening in some places that uh, tube well are located very closely? So, like for example, if one tube well is not getting the water, they are saying that okay, we can have other tube wells nearby. So, is there any methods or, or technology or, or study which can say that what should be the minimum distance between two tube wells? So the government has already laid the norms uh, regarding they have kept like there has to be a buffer between two zones uh, up to say 50 to 100 meters it varies the buffer varies from state to state because the groundwater uh, the groundwater availability also varies from state to state but uh, we uh, we follow our principles of sustainability very well so as far as i can give the example of karnataka one farmer is having one acre of land every year it goes on you know uh, uh, you know drilling the bore well now, what will happen in such cases over a longer period of time, the hydrostatic pressure will decrease and the groundwater table drops the, the current situation that is being observed in parts of Punjab as well. So uh, we in such kind of a case, if there is any well present in a 50 meter you know, buffer, we try to tell the farmers that you, don't, you, you should not ideally go for it. You can try to like, you know, have a kind of an agreement by which you can, you know, do the water sharing. But sometimes what happens is like uh, in the farmer community, they say that the other farmers will be getting, you know, very greedy or I want my own independence to my own resources. So in that case, they have to go for it well. Again, uh, one of the biggest drivers for, uh, you know, groundwater availability is the getting the subsidies. So in Karnataka, the farmer actually doesn't want the water. He wants the subsidies from the government that is actually driving him to, like, you know, go for uh, bore well every year. Uh, and nobody's, uh, like, you know, monitoring this kind of uh, situation. So. Uh, accountability and georeferencing of individual uh, borewells would be able to, like you know, create more uh, awareness and more accountability for uh, the people who are, like you know, currently exploiting the resource, resources. Right, right, okay. Right, so, so can we go for the next question, or should we wait for them to join? So, can you let us know that without able to join, Dr. Sharma? I think he's not in, he has not yet joined. Maybe some issue okay. is there. Okay. That little bit connection issue is there. Uh, I, I can take the question. Okay, so uh, let me see that next question is from Mr. A. Kotalinga. And the question is that in the rocky area, how we can do groundwater recharge? Is it suitable for recharge or recommend for surface storage? So in the hard water area, uh, most of the, the, the kind of aquifer volume is pretty low because whatever water is there, most of the farmers or most of the borewell drillers also, what they do is like you go, uh, go and go to more the depths, you will find the water. That is like, you know, how the current scenario in the up, uh, upcoming water marketing is being happening. And you know that in hard, hard rock or crystalline rock, uh, unless it is an uh, unless it is a confined aquifer, you may not find uh, volumes of water. So the cracks and fissures, wherever water is accumulating, we are able to detect them. And whether these cracks are having volume of water present into it or not, that can be detected. 
but uh, when you talk about recharge recharge is something that uh, requires a strategy that is coming for after uh, targeting and prospecting first you have to identify those underground cracks and fissures then you have to estimate what is the actual volume of water present in these cracks and fissures third if, if the volume is low then at least for a like you know year you have to try to like you know uh, collect the surplus recharge from the water harvesting systems and inject it into this system so that the water is like you know uh, su sufficient enough to be considered as like an, uh, a good amount of uh, you know uh, volumetry aquifer and then you can you know uh, strategically utilize it for different applications as well yeah so one of the like a challenge what normally we get the feedback from the team that okay, now when you are going for the recharge actually even though you are adopting the chart method, there's no uh, surety that it is going to impact the recharge nearby effect. So due to have the uneven pattern that you for, maybe that unless until we have the proper scientific study, the effect of the recharge can happen to other places. Right? Yes. So is there any mechanism to ensure that, okay, now whatever the recharge facility you are doing, that's going to benefit the fuel locations for which you are in, intended to do? So normally it is a factor of uh, location because uh, one technique that might have been applied for the recharge technique in Tamil Nadu may not have uh, specifically worked for uh, Maharashtra as well. So understanding the terrain conditions and the historical significance of the behavior of the groundwater is equally important. So for that we are having the satellite uh, from 1972 to present date that is, that is around 49 years of data. So we can actually like you know for, for forecasting you have to understand the James Hutton principle of uniformitism that the present is the key to the past whatever activities that are happening in present are as a result of something that has already occurred in the past that's why studying the history is also equally important as well so uh, using those principles and getting the different uh, groundwater uh, layers from the past to present they can help us in determining whether the uh, uh, recharge technique is able to give you the benefits or not right uh, one question is from Mr. G. Kundala. Uh, uh, to what extent do you think the surface water source identified for the drinking water schemes are more sustainable versus groundwater source in general? So, like, it is a part of JGM, like, uh, scheme selection, one of the important criteria that whether we should go for groundwater based scheme or surface water scheme. So, I think, question related to sustainability, do you think that surface water source is more sustainable? as compared to the groundwater, that's if you could have some light on this. The Central uh, Water Planning Commission had produced a report uh, saying that ah. one kilometer of Narmada canal uh, evaporates around 1.92 lakh kilometers, uh, sorry, 1.92 uh, MND of uh, water every year. So that means that, you know, the concept of evapotranspiration is something that you have to understand when you talk about uh, you know, surface water, but groundwater, uh, it's difficult to get evaporated unless the surface temperature is high and the aquifer is at a, a lower level. So groundwater is, is going to give you more uh, in terms of the, you know, re re water retention uh, as a resource, the groundwater is more uh, retentive, but if you talk about surface water, then you have to, you know, employ strategies like covering the canals with, uh, say, like uh, solar panels or something like that to, that is also adding to the cost as well. So uh, we, we don't have a clear cut answer because it depends from uh, geography to geography and the amount of surface volume versus the groundwater volume available for a month. Correct. I think one in, uh, aspect is also the operation and maintenance so certainly that if you are going for surface water scheme, multi-layer scheme, and you have to uh, transmit water for long distance, certainly we have to think about the operation and maintenance because it will have a huge operation and maintenance uh, cost also. So when we design a scheme, we have to look both the capex and opex cost also. Maybe that capital cost was still more, but operation cost we are going to have. It's always better to have the local sources rather transmitting water from long distances. So that is where we can be locked in those things. Our question is from Mr. Ajay that in related to water quality, I think. Yeah. In some of the states, the community are not willing to adopt coordination as they consider water to be safe as they are extracted from the underground. So what is the possibility of bacteriological contamination if sewers and industries are not around? So it's more the perception. People think that if you're getting water from groundwater, it's pure water. No need to have disinfection. So what's your view on that? 
sir uh, as far as the technologies that we are having right now we are able to predict and we are able to detect the quality of open surface water not the ground water because for the ground water we require ground ground truthing as well then we can integrate those data into using the inverse modeling techniques so as far as the surface water is concerned uh, there are 14 parameters that we detect uh, we are already doing uh, work with the bangalore uh, pollution control board that is the karnataka state pollution control board for the belandur lake and our uh, work is already published for the same so uh, the current uh, in karnataka they have already started around building around 1 lakh farm ponds in different areas so uh, when wherever the groundwater exploitation is increasing the kind of strategies that are employed from the policy level is to uh, encourage farmers to go towards the farm pond management so that uh, you know uh, the resources can be can be uh, diversified or you know the stress on the groundwater can be uh, su substantially be reduced so uh, using a hybrid approach is a much better approach rather than like you know saying that you just like uh, stop groundwater contamination or you just uh, you know completely go for uh, using the surface water essentially because every uh, I mean, the dynamics that are considered considered as far as surface water is considered that it is more dynamic compared to groundwater as well so uh, the the spatial temporal variation of uh, surface water is always going to change uh, very drastically compared to the groundwater resources so uh, it depends from the region to region and the groundwater availability versus the freshwater availability as well but uh, yeah i mean when you talk about saline water intrusion into the groundwater resources that is a very big issue but we have a technology that can remediate it and utilize the, the saline water for the agriculture applications as well Right, so thank you. Uh, one question for Mr. Bhavnesh Sharma: That what are the depth limitations or penetration of GPR? How suitable is it in hilly area like Himachal Pradesh? Sir, uh, in the GPR segments, there are a range of frequencies that that are used. So there are the very low uh, EMF, uh, the very low frequency uh, uh, as well. and there are certain equipments uh, of the radar technology that, which is working on the principle of passive microwave radiometry that can penetrate 60 kilometers of depth and uh, tell you the uh, underground uh, mapping of the uh, you know, different layers up to the depth of the mantle itself but for that we have to install that instrument over that particular uh, piece for 5 days to get that particular information so we have done certain projects where we had used this equipment in uh, the uh the regions of dehradun and masuri hills uh, so where we were uh, the first project that we started was from uh, masuri where we our focus was to uh, extract the uh, surface recharge coming from the hills towards the that it was a cs csr project that was uh, used for you know finding water for a school so uh, there are equipments which can penetrate 60 kilometers depth as well but uh, again what is the the budget constraints are also very big for operation because the greater the depth you go the greater the cost of the exploration would be right uh one question from dr swati jain uh, mp phd uh, how to provide tap water to every house in jal jeevan mission because the different geographical areas and quantity not sufficient everywhere i'm getting dry in summer area so i think it's a very generic question uh, nothing to the ground water uh yes so uh would like to answer on this question maybe that uh, where are there is a dry area how best we can utilize the water so so uh if, so basically uh, one of the projects that we had come across was in vidarbha uh, vidarbha is also one of the drought prone areas and uh, the rainfall recharge is very low so i'm uh, sorry to interrupt you sir so can you speak loudly because i am getting some feedback that you are not able to listen loudly Sure. So if we can this one, yeah. Uh, so sir, uh, one of the uh, inquiries that had come to us was to uh, to us from Vidarbha. Vidarbha is getting very less rainfall, and it is considered as one of the most prominent drought prone regions in uh, Maharashtra, and as well as in India as well. So what the initially what ha used to happen is that government used to transport water in trains, like you know, there are big big. Uh, trains that used to go uh, to and fro but that used to always increase the cost and, and uh, what the current government has done is that there is a 5000 crore project that has been uh, made to connect the uh, you know water rich areas to the drought drought uh, uh, drought areas through pipeline connection so pipeline connection would be a greater uh, 
uh, efficient resource when it comes to uh, such kind of regions. But uh, nevertheless, we we advise uh, like you know uh, certain drought droughted areas because rainfall is not in our hands. Rainfall is a very uh, crucial parameter, and our entire water balance equation is also dependent on the rainfall uh, conditions as well. So in such kind of area where the demand is high, uncertainty is more. Uh, pipe connection along with the groundwater resource uh, can be one of the good resources. And as far as pipeline connection to every the Jal Jeevan mission is concerned, that uh, every person should get 55 uh, liters of uh, water. That can be uh, obtained from the fresh water or the the ground waters, or like, you know the the dams or the rivers are possible. So I think maybe I I I may might might have missed one of the uh, one of the points that could addition that can that can be add on uh, as well. But uh, these are the primary sources of water through which we can get the uh, uh, pipeline uh, water as well. Right. Thank you. So I think this is observation from Mr. P. Kondalia Rao that uh, about the climate change also had impact on surface water. Yes, we do agree. And whenever we design the infrastructure, we have to take into account the climate resilience in the infrastructure design as well this area. Uh, one suggestion is that please include recharge structure construction by JZM implementation agency. Uh, yes, sir, for you definitely help you on both of the JGM guidelines. There's a provision that whenever we have the groundwater scheme, so we have to like a groundwater recharge also. So that's part of our strategy that definitely we should have a, a recharge structure. One question is Mr. Bhavnesh Sharma that uh, what is the average cost of GPR instrument which can have penetration up to 500 meters? Uh, sir, so actually the cost of the very bread, they are uh, asking the cost of the equipment or the cost of the services for which the uh, 500 meter test is asked. I think it will be for services, I understand. Suppose if you wanted the services, then how much will it cost? So, so uh, the kind of uh, operation that we do with the GPR uh, normally, uh, so that is like, you know, we are not covering a particular point or particular uh, farmer, but for that we require a larger area such as like a village itself or minimum uh, acres of like 500 uh, acres of uh, 500 hectares of uh, coverage as well, it means considering the area, area equivalent to a village. So that then it becomes more economical when you talk about using a GPR. Uh, again, one of the drawbacks of GPR is whenever the soil is moist, uh, like you know, it's difficult for you to like uh, differentiate between the groundwater resources and the soil moisture resources. So generally, we that is done uh, during the dry period, uh, or we you know whenever we see that during the uh, later part of the day, then the, the soil is dry. So I think the average cost uh, for that it, it is a kind of a we have to look into it as to how much area we need to uh, cater or scan for the purpose as well. Right, right. So, uh, I think question from Mr. Vivek Kumar Sa, I think already to some extent you have answered. Uh, his question is which one is the more effective, GPR or resistivity survey? So, in terms of, I think here maybe asking whether accuracy and the uh, result success rate, what do you suggest? So now in terms of, you know, uh, portability, like, you know, when you talk about resistivity, you have to install the 100 meter, uh, like, you know, line and the kind of uh, time versus cost uh, equation when it comes to resistivity. Okay, resistivity is a cheap method, but it is as much, uh, you know, double the time consuming as much as you use a GPR. You just use a GPR, scan over a land, and, you know, you are able to get the data very uh, fast. So uh, that is one of the consideration that you know the speed versus uh, and, and as far as accuracy is concerned, the uh, the GPR which are having a greater penetration depth, uh, the uh, ones which we had done a maximum depth uh, of penetration is uh, 1300 feet that we have been able to reach so far. But uh, GPR and uh, resistivity, there are still another uh, one instrument which is used for oil exploration, and that is having a penetration depth of uh, the so something around 5000 but that is used for oil exploration as well and the one the gpr which i said that it is having 60 kilometer depth uh, till the mantle the only up uh, the only drawback is you have to keep it at one place and for five days you have to keep it there unless you get it. that is the first time you get the reason so time again is a constraint over there but depth is going to increase so even any uh, faults or fissures or cracks or you know any uh, tectonic plate movement is that that is also been able to detect by that uh, instrument as well 
I think this question has been partly answered, but I will repeat this question uh, to other part of that. What could be the appropriate minimum interval between two bore wells and infiltration wells sunk in the rivers for effective functionality? So, um, sir, normally we, uh, we suggest that uh, 50 to 100 uh, meter or 50 to 100 meter distance should be kept between two successive wells. If you want to last for a, a long period of time, but uh, that is a theoretical approach. Uh, in practical, when we have gone to the field, uh, the situations are very different uh, because already the wells have been dug up, uh, like, you know, uh, up to like after 10 meters, they have the another well is uh, present. What happens in India is once a farmer finds a well, everyone around him goes and like, you know, mujhe bhi chahiye, mujhe bhi chahiye. That, that's how things work out. And the, the, the situation in Punjab that has arise is a, a live example for those kind of situations. So. Right. Thank you. So I think so. Thanks a lot for very precisely answering all the questions. Uh, I'm not sure Dr. Sarma will be back. Uh, uh, so that's what the questions we have listed so far. And uh, we request the uh, participants if you have further questions already, the contact details and mobile number have been shared. Or they're most welcome to share the question with the email as well. And you can directly contact the concerned uh, person if you want the services related to the groundwater detection, prediction, groundwater recharge. Uh, can I sir, would like to conclude the session? Uh we are done with uh, so i would say it was you know very enlightening a lot of inputs a lot of technologies uh, i think a little we had some uh, technical glitch in between so we couldn't have dr sharma again maybe since he is joining so maybe some issues but otherwise it was very enlightening i think uh, this is an area where uh, we have to all concentrate because uh, first is, as you rightly pointed out, we still depend in major way. Majority of our sources are groundwater sources. So we should try to understand them because uh, one is, yes, we should use this technology, available technologies. I think a lot of people got an idea of how this technology is there, number one. Number two, there are professional agencies which provide services. Uh, maybe the department or the individual about this, you know, the technology and the availability of water. And the next thing I think we should think of is that uh, because uh, now the whole world is looking at, I was discussing with one of my colleagues who had been recently there in the exposure. So the now whole world is now looking about water and especially, uh, you know, how to recharge the waters, how to recharge the aquifers. So water becoming a scarce resource day by day. So we should look, look at all this technology, which can, as you rightly pointed out, ensure the sustainability of our sources so in ngm we talk about sustainability of sources and sustainability of the system so once the source is sustainable only then only we can make the system also sustainable so uh, we should also look at ways how to make our uh, systems and sorry sources sustainable and how this scientific approach the advancements in this scientific field can be leveraged to make our sources sustainable first things of course as rightly pointed out you know, locate the right source and other thing is what are the ways uh, that we can you know uh, we can contribute towards this recharging of the sources thereby making the sources sustainable so that is where we i think we should look at from long term perspective thank you so much once again for all the participants who have taken time and joined and also i would like to thank uh, Mr. Ridesh, though Dr. K.D. Sharma couldn't join again, I should be thankful to Mr. Ridesh, who has been kind enough. So I think he's a young budding professional. Yes, I, I really uh, appreciate him and wishing wish him all the best for his uh, future success. I'm also grateful to Mr. Uh, Rana R.K. Singh, who is the team leader of uh, our PMU at NJM for taking his time out and moderating this. Thank you. Thank you so much. Once again, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you all. Thank you all. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir.